Hi everybody, this is Jim Davis again with DVS Direct. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of tech tips here today on configuring uh, pan tilt zoom cameras that are using uh, Visca or RS-232 control. Uh, here we have our little PTC Optics uh, pan tilt zoom camera. And if you look on the back here, we have these two little uh, mini DIN connectors where basically it's a Visca or RS-232 uh, control protocol. Uh, a lot of pan tilt zoom cameras will have this. That's kind of a Sony standard and you'll find a lot of cameras with this. So uh, we've had some questions about how to configure the uh, control of the camera in the TriCaster software. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. So one of the first things you need since there's not an actual RS-232 port on the TriCaster is an RS-232, uh, a USB to RS-232 adapter. Um, we have a couple here. This one here is a single adapter. Basically on one end you got a RS-232 port and on the other end it's USB. It just plugs into the uh, um, into one of the USB ports on the TriCaster. Then we also have this one which I kind of like because if we're doing multiple cameras and I'm running cables to different places I may want to be able to um, uh, run cables individually to each uh, to each camera position along with the uh, video connection and uh, this guy here is uh, basically four ports it's got four RS-232 ports on it and on this side we got a USB port so that's the first thing you need the second thing you need is a uh, RS-232 to mini DIN ad adapter cable which with the uh, PTC optics cameras come with it uh, uh, the other cam some of the other um, cameras may or may not come with it. They're easily enough. You can get them online. They're very inexpensive. So, so one of the problems that we run into when we're configuring a PTZ camera uh, using RS-232 protocol is figuring out which COM port we're going to use. This can be a little confusing because in addition to the uh, uh, adapter, you're, uh, if you're connecting a control surface like a CS460 or a CS Mini or a Time Warp, it also uses the same uh, serial port to or similar ser serial ports to configure for or communicate with the with the control surface. So, uh, what you need to do is you got to kind of decipher. Uh, which COM port is going to the camera because you'll need to know that to configure it. So let's take a look at how we're going to set that up. So I'm going to switch over here to the uh, to the TriCaster and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get out of the TriCaster software and I'm going to go into Windows. So we'll get into Windows real quick. Now normally when I'm doing this I'm going to uh, I'm going to have the uh, uh, control surface already connected. And the reason for that is, or control surfaces, if there's a time warp and a control and a, and a, a time, uh, main uh, uh, control surface, I have them connected already because then the COM ports will be assigned. So let's take a look. We'll just go to compu uh, the my computer and right click and click on manage, and then open up the device manager and go to ports. And there you can see we have uh, a couple of different ports in the machine. Uh, some of the COM ports are assigned to different things, so I like to have all this already configured before I connect the USB dongle. Um, now, what's going to now? I like the four-port dongle because it'll always assign the COM ports in in the order the same way every time. Whereas if I use these individual dongles and I plug them in, you know, unless you label them or something, it's kind of hard to remember which one was what COM port. So, let's take a look at what happens. Then, when we plug in our USB uh, to, U to uh, RS-232 adapter, you'll see now we have more COM ports showing up. So give it a sec. And there, now you can see we've uh, got a bunch of extra COM ports. Um, you can assign the COM numbers. If you right click on one of the COM ports and go to properties and uh, go to port settings and advanced, and there you can actually see where I can assign different COM ports if I want to. Now, I you want to keep them under COM16 because in the software, uh, you're going to see that that's the top COM port. That's the last one that you can kind of get to. So 
I usually set them to the last four, 13, 14, 15, and 16 in this case, uh, because I like to have, and I don't know if this needs to be this way, it's just the way I've done it and it seems to work, uh, is I like to have the COM ports higher for the uh, USB dongle above the control surfaces. Uh, every now and then you'll get an error in the control in, in the TriCaster when you launch the session that says uh, uh, something to the effect uh, 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 control surface fail safe. And um, if you see that error, I mean, we may see it here, we may not, but if you see that error, just give it a few seconds and let let the th let the software find the the uh, the uh, control surfaces, and there, generally everything's going to work at that point. So um, so let's go ahead and relaunch our TriCaster. And by the way. Uh, go back here real quick. You want to make note of the uh, the COM port uh, numbers so that you can set them up in the um, so you can set them up in the software. Now, the way this particular dongle works, uh, I've got the I've got the the numbers labeled on the on the USB uh, connectors themselves, so I know which one is which. Um, you may have to go through some trial and error. Uh, to determine, and this is where it gets confusing, is it, you're trying to set up the COM port uh, and you're not sure if you have four of them which one is which. So uh, typically it's just a trial and error thing. Once you get them figured out, label them so that you know you know which one's the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one. So, And once you do that, they'll always come up that way. So anyhow, so I've got these set up uh, COM 13 through 16. Then I took the uh, the RS-232 input uh, on the camera and I connected it to the first port on the dongle. So that means that camera will be assigned to COM port 13. So now let's go ahead and launch my session. And uh, once we get the session launched, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to actually configure the camera control. So let's give it a second to launch. Now I'm running... Uh, now, as you can see, the error up there says fail safe set has recovered connection to your control surface. Uh, typically, that is a harmless error. Uh, give it a few seconds, and once uh, the control surface is lit up, which mine is now lit up, everything typically works. This, if you see that error, don't worry about it. Uh, it's just something about the way the system pulls the, uh, the different COM ports to find out where the control surfaces are, as far as I can tell. So, so anyhow, what we're going to do is we're going to... Uh, we're going to connect to the camera. So uh, this is the version 2 of Advanced Edition. And in the, in the version 2 of Advanced Edition, they moved where this is set up at. Normally on a regular uh, Standard Edition TriCaster, if you go over and open up the gearbox under the monitor, you'll see the PTZ tab up here. But in Advanced Edition, they actually moved it over here. So we open it up here and we go to PTZ. And now you can see uh, the different, uh, uh, we actually have four uh, camera ports for control. And since my camera, my PTZ camera is hooked up to input number two, I'm going to set it up on N2 in the control area. So what we're going to do is we're going to go here and find the second camera. And what we want to do is uh, go to this pull down and we're going to select RS-232 Sony. Okay. Now once we do that, that's what now we need to know the COM port number, which was, remember it was COM port 13. So let's go ahead and select COM 13 here. There it is. Now once you do those two things, just click the checkbox. Now, if we did everything right, you can see now the camera's resetting. So you can tell that your uh, communication is happening correctly if the camera does that little maneuver once you click that box. So now we have our camera set up to control it. Now, once we have the camera set up to control, how do we control it? Well, there's a couple different ways. I'm, I'm, I'm more, this video is more about configuring the camera, but I will show you a little bit quickly you know, how we actually control the camera. So if we go down here, in this part of the interface and you click on PTZ and you'll see down here there's for your, your four cameras. We're using camera two so let's select camera two and now we have eight presets that we can use for um, for setting up different scenes. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up the gearbox. And now we can just move the camera. We can set it. We can have it, you know, reposition the camera however we want. Okay. And we'll just update that snapshot. So now it's created that preset for me. So I'll go to my second one. And maybe I'll set up another uh, uh, setting over here. Uh, put it over there. There we go. And update snapshot. And so on and so forth. So what you can do is you can go through and... Uh, uh, configure the camera. You can zoom it in if you want to. Uh, to zoom, you just uh, use the little, uh, if you have a, mel a wheel on the mouse, just use that to kind of zoom your camera in a little bit. Update snapshot. And uh, so on and so forth. So that's basically how you set up the controls. Now, you can also control the uh, um, you can control the camera dynamically using the uh, control surface by, uh, I, for, I forget what the sequence is, uh, but there's a, a command sequence where you can actually use the joystick on the CS460 or CS860 or 8000 to dynamically control the camera. But uh, for what I'm doing, I find it works better to uh, set up presets. So now once the presets are set, you can select one just by clicking on it. And um, you can do this in macros too, by the way, if you wanted to. You could set up macros to do uh, like a whole bunch of different things and, and uh, set it up. And you can see there it, uh, it's going to the different positions that I've, or different presets I've, I've set up. You can also adjust the speed. If I want to make that happen slower, I can slow down the speed of the camera. So... So if I had uh, multiple PTZ cameras, I could go back in, connect each one of those up to one of those COM ports, and it's just a matter of then of assigning that particular COM port to, the, uh, to that particular input. And then that, each camera would be controlled individually. And like I said, I like to use the multi-channel uh, RS-232 converter because then I can actually, I have this cable that's uh, basically RG6 and then... Uh, Cat5 cable to Siamese together, and I can take that and run it to my camera positions and use the uh, the uh, SDI uh, over the the, the uh, RG6, and then the uh, RS232 can come in over the Cat uh, over the Cat5 connection. I made these little adapters to go from uh, the RJ45 connectors to uh, you know the the uh, just the regular old uh, 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 DB9 connectors for the for the serial port. So well, that's about it for this part for this video. Um, I hope uh, you found it helpful and interesting. And if you have any other questions about the TriCaster or or whatever, uh, feel free to email me or give us a call. Again, my name's Jim Davis with DVS Direct, and thanks for stopping by.